and have said that in some cultures there were up to, up to six identifiable distinct genders. And everybody lived in harmony, and two-spirited people and uh, people who were transsexual or transgendered were actually given positions of honor and reviewed as being very special people and being sacred people and were given a prominent role in the community of the engendered. Uh, so it's wonderful to see that happening, uh, but it's a slow and painful process. In my personal life, I struggled with um, my own sexuality, and unfortunately I was a victim of sexual abuse, which I write about in my book, uh, Childhood Sexual Abuse, and that impacted my later life and my later sexuality. And I also was in the situation of having a brother, um, my older brother, who was seven years old. All my lesbian friends said, she is the one to come here. It's just like, let me tell you briefly about that. She's humble, she will not tell you this. It's like we have an international cast of a um, musical play called Cats. Have you heard of that? This is New York, Broadway. International cast coming to New York to perform. The original cast, something like that. And suddenly the leading singer, actress, uh, is sick, cannot come, which happened with our friend Melissa, who is supposed to come from Australia, and I hope she gets better now. But then again, because it's in New York, and the musical is cats, and then suddenly, Barbara strikes and shows up. Oh, and I can sing the part. So she is our Barbara strikes and stepped in to save our country from not having any lady representative on this stage. Good killing <laughs> number one, let's get a cherry time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> right, what have you to say? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, see, I'm nervous. Can you at least uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your work? You wrote so many books, 18 books. Feel free to talk about it. What motivated you? Because um, I understand that you are wrong. You can correct me on that. that in Thailand, you are in, in a girl girl with relationship, we are more familiar with the bush farm relationship, right? This is more acceptable, you see it everywhere, in every convenience store, there will be a bush sky, a lady working there, and then, right? And, I, and then, but with the mm, girl, I think there has a term, I don't know whether it's an honorable term or not, you can correct me, they call it lipstick lesbian, beautiful ladies, you know, to beautiful ladies. This is pretty new in Thailand. But you still open your book club and have many other activities to promote understanding and awareness. Maybe you can tell us about that too, because you are truly a pioneer in this field in this country. Oh, that's so wide. Okay, how can I take this? Okay, first, uh, I write a book about, we, in Thailand we call it you. You is from the Chinese term. Okay? Uh, lesbian is a strong word for, for Thai culture. If, if you say, I'm a lesbian is too strong, but you say, oh, I'm a Thai you. It's kind of like soft. But you call it Yuri, right? Yuri. Japanese term. Like lily flowers. Uh, yeah. Okay, but in here, I think we prefer the lesbian, because it's well known. Um, I started my first book because I want to make people understand the diversity between queers and queers. It doesn't have to be among straight people and queer people, but we all have uniqueness. So to understand each other through words and fiction might be easier to under understand. Plus, um, in Thailand, we still think about it as a tragedy. You can see it in newspaper, like lesbian will end up relationship with communist suicide. But nowadays, they're not like that anymore. There's so many YouTubers and good relationships like more than decades. And I just want to spread it out to get the relationship of queers into the, what is it called? Consciousness chip. Yeah. Just that all the books, 18 books, that's the idea. Thank you. That's wonderful. So you see the thank you so much for your contribution. You see the similarity between these two great authors. They have the courage to discuss uh, their cause, actually in a very beautiful way, in their own way. So, um, uh, like I said, she's a pioneer in this field. Any ladies aspiring young writer, you don't have to be people in the community. You can ask her advice because what she, uh, I think, she did was phenomenal. 
and we can, we can come back and discuss later about. She wrote 18 books with different names also, and different styles. Some of them are a bit fantasy, by setting. The settings are different, the storylines are different. So you need to love reading books of different styles. One of you write that, we can discuss it. I was like, could you read where? Could you read <laughs> about this? Thank you so much. And now we have the only illustrator in town here. The illustrator who has made children books so appealing and to adult me, myself, I want to collect all of these books. Did you bring the other on the stage? No. Oh, no, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's, he's, uh, I don't know much about art, but even though I don't know anything about art, this book is very cute and it cute is too little a word to describe it. But what I admire most about my, um, uh, two things I could think I admire too. I couldn't find out anything about his information at all on the internet. I only find that he loved cupcakes, he loved cookies, and he loved ice cream. But he loved writing and illustrating more than that, and that is a lot. So we're going to hear of someone who shares all childhood passion of the love of cakes and ice cream, but love illustrating more than that. It shows in big work, his work of as well, and Apollyon, and um, identity expression. Um, it's a very confusing time. You know, for uh, a teenager as it is, you know, even if you're not questioning your identity, it's it's hard being a, a teenager. Um, so that book is called Flamer, and it's about a uh, boy at a scout camp the summer before um, high school, and it's in, set in the 1990s, um, and he's coming to terms with his sexual identity and. Uh, it deals with friendship and bullying, and sometimes how those two things can overlap. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited to to share it when it comes out. Probably. Thank you. You mentioned some interesting topic. Your new young adult uh, oriented uh, book. Do you talk about suicide and uh, bullying also? Right? Uh, so that, uh, it touches your heart. This is growing as much as the heart, and um, you cannot explain it in words, but I recommend you find, uh, look up his uh, books. Just the cover, you understand only what I mean. It's so beautiful and it's friendly to all uh, our readers, our people in the, with the LGBTI community as well. It's a nice little book, and many books, <laughs> many books, especially the Iliad thing. Especially, I highly recommend you to follow his IG. Uh, lately, he brought his little devil. So we don't have to know necessarily as long as it's literature coming out in a good sense. So that's what I picked up a while back. And of course, Abkhetsa was Italian and she's a Sicilian as well, which we love. And the third one is, I've got to shift to this region, Oe. Who knows Oe? Kenzaburo Oe. Also, talk if you like to about your motivation to 
address such a difficult issue in your first book. I think it takes a lot of courage. Of course, he's a native Canadian. He's his um, his real name Lamata. Lamata is a Cree word. I ask him what it means. Usually, uh, it has meaning. He said, "Oh, uh, that's a lot of meaning." But uh, come from a brave, courageous chief or chief Lamata. So, and he's a chief in his own right. So, we're gonna ask the chief Lamata here on stage with us. Wow, how did you have that courage and the motivation to write something that even some readers who give you five stars on Amazon, they are not read and you have to skip it. Now in Canada, where you know our human rights aren't perfect yet, but we've come a long way. And um, especially for uh, GL LGBTQ uh, two spirited and, and trans rights. And so I I I knew I wouldn't be persecuted by the law or by anybody, and that I would likely face very little discrimination um, or consequences for getting that angle of my story out. And um, I do have friends, though, who, uh, for example, they're from other countries like Iran, who don't even, and we know uh, that they're, they're gay or queer, but they don't dare self-identify, even though they're Canadians and they've been living in Canada for a long time, they still have family in Iran, and they still travel back and forth. And in Ethiopia and other, I won't name them all, but there are many countries, as the professor mentioned, that are, you know, where it's still very dangerous to be open and public. In terms of identity and changing your legal identity and your birth certificate, well, Craig was a real go-getter. Craig slash Trina was a real go-getter, and she, she just didn't, take no for an answer. She didn't consider this the legal context. So she simply applied for uh, well, her first man, the first man that she loved as of when she would have become she. And she took that to a minister who was also a marriage commissioner of uh, writing an LGBT issue because we the president who can write so many styles with so many opinions. I mean 18 books and so different categories. Uh, can you tell us about that? I'd like to ask you two questions. First, uh, when you are labeled uh, LGBT writer, author, does it limit you? Like limit your audience, or does it annoy you in Thailand, Thai society, or does it make you feel empowered? Uh, how would you feel about being labeled like LGBT? And uh, would, for example, if there is a readers here that interested in your book because wow, you wrote so many times, all them so successful. Would they be able to add as so kind of powerful and key to the group? Okay, um, these two questions can be answered in one. Marketing strategy. Marketing strategy, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Marketing! I started without marketing, but after I've been into this market, it's weird that 50% of my customers are male. Wow! And I gotta say this, like, 80% um, of them, those 18 books within four years, there's no rated X or R, C at all. At all. Not at all. So, this is quite new, right? <laughs> so, it depends on the segment that you put your work into. Of course, there's so many um, types of the books within the within the lesbian section, but male readers who I think they respect us, so they want to learn how women think. I've talked to some of them, and okay, that's the first one. So being gay and out in the public doesn't give me any privilege or anything at all in the writing thing. Like we present art as art, there's no gender. Like just like songs, movies, it is fun. Like movies, um, we accept it. But maybe lesbians can relate better with lesbian stories. We like adventures too. But Carol might be the top list of the show. And everybody knows Carol, right? The movie? Okay, the price of salt. Thank you. And okay, for the second 
question now. I just attended the August Lilith Festival in Thailand. It's the second festival in Thailand. They, they have it a lot in Japan. And I found that last year, the first time at the Lilith Festival. Okay, Lilith Festival is the lesbian manga festival, which is all cartoon, cartoonist and products are cartoon. Okay, um, last year, there were 30% of male customers in that, but this year, it's like 50%, and um, the festival started at 10.30. By 11, the cartoon has sold out. The queue is like in front of the booth to the elevator. So I think it's kind of like marketing stuff, how you present it, but um, like Daryl said, what I write, it doesn't mean that you gotta open up or be anything. Just be yourself and be happy with yourself. So it's a story of human being. Yes, and just a lot of human love. Just normal, like everyone says it, but in layers of emotion. So, because we have different shoes, right? So, okay, being queer in this healthy family is different from unhealthy family. That's it. That's one big question. Thank you for the question. Uh, I heard uh, from uh, the administrator of the official family page that one was sorry, one of the best selling ones. She said, like, the, one of the leading uh, character is the princess that in love with the actress, but the princess has her duty. So she has her. It's more like a, a real life story that gender is not quite an issue anymore. It's more like how a person deals with duty and obligation. Or uh, uh, human uh, needs, or something that's universal, or uh, like emotional side of the self of the princess or an actress. So you can see that uh, the is very creative in coming up with settings that can help you better. Because I didn't have time to read that, okay, but I will, I definitely will. <laughs> Besides that, okay, I, you know, I want you guys to think of my books as a fantasy one. Because I put characters in different points of view. A sick one who has depression. Uh, even the, like those popular characters who happen to be a singer or pop star as well, and normal human, like not that charming, not that rich, like serious stuff. I try to put it as much as normal, just like us, and present it in Thai culture. Thai cultural context. Yeah, and okay, I, I missed this answer. It's easy to relate to my words, but you need to translate it to English first because it's not in Thai. That's all. Yeah, that will be a challenge because I, I believe everybody might agree that literature sometimes has some heavy cultural context that the translator himself or herself have to find a way to appeal the, the book that you illustrated. Uh, it's in such a way that they see that this market needs to grow for this kind of book to promote. Um, inclusion to promote marriage equality in such a way that anybody can read it. Basically, I would say it should be a textbook for kindergarten preschool. I understand that in England, anybody from England here, they may have some kind of this kind of education even for young children already. Uh, how would you like, how is the situation in America right now? How, what direction do you think is going and how would you like it to? And that's all that should matter and it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. So um, I think it's important to get children. Uh, this is the interesting thing that I found, is that children understand this very quickly. They understand very easily uh, what the book is about. It's, oh, it's just these worms love each other and whatever. And, um, and, and when children you know, start learning about queer people, um, you know, you hear some echoing sometimes of things that they've heard from their parents. But when you explain to them um, different types of identities or choosing not to have an identity, um, usually they're like, okay, what's, what's next, you know? And I found it's more educating the parents. It's the struggle, right? Because we're so, it's so ingrained. Um, 
just the stigmas that we grow up with, um, that we have to unlearn. And, um, you know, we were talking about suicide before, it's like, as a queer person, uh, again, addressing disability, growing up in a world where you don't see anyone like yourself, um, am I supposed to be here? Do I belong here? And if I don't belong here, then maybe I should go. So uh, I think it's important for people to see themselves so that they know, yes, <laughs> you are supposed to be here and you do have value in this world. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. thank you very much. I think it's a, it's a beauty of a, it's a beauty of a children's book with illustration just like yours that can convey this message to people who might need it most. I totally agree that the book educates more adults than children and it has a, a, a very nice appeal to all. I, I hope that things get better in, in the States. I didn't really follow when the, how the su Supreme Court case came out uh, the, the discussing about changing the law or something like the federal law, but I heard it was a big, big issue there, so I wish you all the best. I'm sure it would, after he's gone, you know, I give us more chocolate kiss. <laughs> Professor Wichit, <Wittin>, please. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Anyone from South America? Hands up. Oh. Well, I'm from South America. For this reason, I converse with some school teachers in South America. I ask them how to teach gender diversity at school. And words of wisdom came from one of them, or more. Uh, why don't you start with fairy tales? A fairy tale could be something like this. Cinderella saves Prince Charming. Role reversal helps sometimes in terms of equity. Or maybe uh, two kings fall in love or two queens fall in love in a very monarchical situation somewhere over there in Central South America. So there are ways, there are ways. And thirdly, gender identity recognition. Now believe it or not, in South Asia today there are various countries that persecute gays and lesbians, but those very same countries recognize transgender people can change ID without operation. Now, in South Asia, two or three countries today, new laws, even though it's still illegal to be gay, but transgender people enjoy a, a more elevated status today in those countries. In Thailand, in Thailand, even if you have an operation, transgender, you cannot change your biological sex as a sign of birth. And I advocate a good law to enable transgender people to be recognized in terms of their preferred gender identity. But it hasn't come to pass yet. It has to come because it's not fair to transgender. Let's have a toilet, for goodness sake. Let's have a toilet. Right? And if you have a toilet, spend it well so that anybody can go in. Gender neutral toilets. In other words, doors. Huh? And save the costs for the water and everything else, lest it be the earth, so to speak. And gender markers, gender markers, you don't need gender markers. Today I don't see myself as Mr. Vitit, uh, not Professor Vitit here either, I'm just Vitit, I'm just here, half a volunteer, to offer a chocolate cake <laughs> as incentive. So um, you don't, please go home and revamp 